All right, then let's get on our very first conversation tonight. And it's about an imminent political merger or alliance, as the case may be. Whichever way it comes, but there is some kind of working together a partnership that is emerging. And the two parties that are involved, which is Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi, have been talking about this in different fora. They have been talking about the possibility of coming together. Although Mr. Atiku Abubakar has said that he will continue to contest for election. But what is this possible alliance? You've seen these alliance happen before when these two men on your screen ran in the race in 2019. And of course, they ran on different uh, uh, platforms in 2023. Let's get talking, everyone. I'm being joined by the spokesperson of the Peter Obi uh, uh, Media, uh, Alaji Yunisa Tanko, who joins us live here in our Abuja. So thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Shion. So, can you give us clarity? <clears throat> what is on the mind of Mr. Obi? Is, does he want to run as a vice presidential candidate alongside Mr. Atiku Abubakar, who says he's going to run uh, again, as long as his energy and power permit him. What exactly is on the minds of Mr. And Peter he also Obi? said that he'll be willing to support Peter Obi if the party support a Southern candidate. That was his on initial... Uh, uh, what what is, is, is that, but the recent one, he says he will continue to run. Yes, yeah, so I'm just reminding you of some of the two statements that he made. But let me make a clarity here. His Excellency Peter Gregory Obi is not interested in a merger that is only for the interest of seeking power. The, he's interested in a merger that will bring Nigerians out of the property, poverty level, bringing the Nigerian people to a comfortable state of health care, making sure Nigerians have portable drinking water, making sure that Nigerians have the issues of problem of power supply being solved. So in therefore, he is interested strongly on a matter that is driven by ideology and a program. But if it's only for the purpose of power, he's not interested. So therefore, as we speak, I am so surprised. I thought I was um, so uh, pessimistic as I got to the issue of taking people out of poverty, being my antecedent, working with Ghani against poverty and all. I've never seen somebody who wake up in the morning and anything he has in his pocket, you just say, Tanko, what do we do? I have some small money in my hand. Can we invest it in the area of bringing those children that he visited in the north out of this particular quagmire of Western education? Can we invest in them? So he's so passionate about seeing Nigeria work, not passionate about only getting power. So he has always said it, that he just wants to see Nigeria work. So eventually, if issues of murder comes about, it has to be seriously and very vigorously based on the program for the interests of the Nigerian people. So uh, is it that Mr. Obi is not really concerned about being the face or being the candidate, or he just wants to be part of a cause for a greater Nigeria? Is no. that the idea? No. Or is he, he still wants to run? His Excellency is interested in wrestling Nigeria out of the poverty level. Running, of course, will come when the time comes. He's interested in making sure Nigeria is out of the wood. So therefore, he's reaching out to those who have similar ideology, believing in the emancipation of Nigerians out of that particular poverty land. That is the reason why he has to reach out to those of some of his former colleagues, some of the former uh, 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 vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if we put the issues of running first, not taking care of the Nigerian state as a country, then we're making a fundamental mistake. So he's more interested in making sure that Nigeria works at the moment now. That is his first priority. Mm. So, I mean, how does... So, is it merger or alliance? What is the right word in this talk that well, is ongoing? The discussions are within the level of the senior category of gladiators who are interested in making Nigeria work. That means the first... Mostly citizens of the political party. Now, in this case, there are two issues. A merger, of course, you know, it means that the political party have to sublet all of their certificates and then become a new party. It's a rebirth of a new political party. It takes procedures and timing. So we should be expecting a new political party. 
Well, that will be if the decision is for us to have a merger or to have an alliance. An alliance, of course, is different from a merger. Alliance is that we are working together. You maintain your name. I maintain my name, but we work in together in the same direction. That is an alliance. Who are the people that Mr. Obia has been speaking with? It's, you see, the fact is that Nigerians, political parties and leaders are tired of the shenanigans and the propaganda that's already happening in Nigeria. The Nigerian people are in total disdain and they are being all in total disdain and poverty is so high to a point of 33 point something uh, 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 percent of, the, uh, of, uh, uh, of inflation. So in that regard, many political parties are interested in working together to get Nigerians out of the woods. So many. And, and the plan is to get APC out of power in 2027. Those who are inefficient to perform from the base on the true, uh, based on the promises that they make in Nigeria is the target. It's not about the APC as a political party, but anybody that is not interested in moving Nigeria forward should be out of this particular We've government. seen at the meeting, uh, pictures uh, emerging from meeting with Mr. Atiku Abubakar, uh, meetings uh, with uh, Bukola Saraki. Correct. Meetings with uh, former governor of Jigawa State. Yes. Uh, who are the other people that Mr. Obi have, have met? There are people that he have met, mm -hmm. captains of industries, technocrats, um, students, um, political gladiators. No, we're talking about the, you, you know, you at that echelon, uh, uh, which you say that the top gladiators are those whom he's meeting right now that are talking about who are these other people. We know the ones that we do know are the ones I've mentioned, yes. but you are always with him. Yes. Who are the other ones that... Uh, there are quite a number of them, and there's quite a number of them that have been reached out to, and they are going to be reached out to. Like, for example, the engineer, Rabi Musa Konkosu, uh, who also is a, a big uh, a political gladiator. Of course, they'll be meeting with him. They'll be meeting with different, different individuals. Some of the political parties, like the SDP, the ADC, uh, uh, the ADP, ZLP, all of the political parties will be reached out to. And some of them are already having meetings too within themselves. So we need to have a conglomerate of well-grounded politicians who are interested in getting Nigeria out of the world. It cannot be a one-man show. Mm. So uh, is the thinking about the power balancing and uh, this zoning arrangement going to come into play? Is that, uh, is that, I mean, are they thinking that the power should remain in the South? Remember, these process, processes, as I said, will take a little bit of long period mm -hmm. because each of the gladiators are talking to each other on their level as senior citizens of their political parties. But when you involve the political party, you have to subject all of your suggestions and decisions to the political party for them to agree. That means whatever it is that you are discussing will be subjected to the national working committees of each of the political parties, and they have to come to terms with regard to what will be given, what will be accepted. How do we work together on what? For us, it's about program for the emancipation of Nigeria, nothing more, nothing less. So if that should be an agreement position, then we'll now look at who does the cap suit best. And that will be discussed at the time in which we reach that particular decision. Is Mr. Obi willing to relinquish or to uh, step down if, for example, he's not picked within the... Uh, uh, because we've seen this happen before mm. with younger and emerging uh, political leaders who are presidential candidates in their poli different political parties in 2019, but they couldn't agree at the end of the day. But is Mr. Obi liberal enough in this conversation to say... I'm going to jettison my ambition of becoming Nigeria's president for the interest of the emancipation that you have described. Well, Peter Obi is a brand. A brand is still and infiltrated into the heart of the Nigerian youth. We've all established that. For over, over 12.5 million Nigerian youth actually register because the message of Peter Obi resonates with them. No wonder why uh, the champion newspaper yesterday gave him the award of the most impactful politician of the year 2023, uh, which I was, high, uh, I was fortunate to represent him in that particular program. So that, of course, speaks volume on its own. And he has also said that he's not interested in, he's not desperate to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but he's desperate to see Nigeria work. So at the table where these particular issues will be discussed when the time comes, these decisions and these particular qualities of the individuals and the capacity of individuals will be put on the table. Then it will be left for whoever a decision that will say, okay, 
this particular person qualify to lead us in this particular struggle and is willing to abide by that. Let's imagine and pray that it, it, it does happen. Yes. If Nigeria becomes better in the next one year, yeah. and which is a prayer and the vision of Mr. Peter Obi, yes. will this alliance still go on? Of course, why not? Because at that point in time, we are still talking about the fairy fairy of survivor. That's the most shameful part of it. We're just talking about power, light, you know, water, health, and all. Le developed countries have gone have surpassed that particular level. We're still talking about that. So when, if this particular government is listening to the yearning and aspiration of Nigeria within a one year, although the president promised that they are going to give us power in the next four years, and if we don't do that, if he doesn't do that, you can vote him out. So let's even assume we give them, uh, we give them within the year in which you have postulated. Now, it will be very, very clear that the Nigerian people can't decide and suggest that, look, we have to step up our game. There are other issues that we need to talk about. How about the economic well-being, the stabilized economic well-being of Nigeria? How about the issue of security? Then we will look at other needful things that Nigerians need to be in the highest position of the community of nations. So in that regard, the alliance will hold because we need a Nigeria that is well-respected in and out of the country. Not this particular Nigeria that been struggling to get to his village, struggling to get to a village where water is not there, where power supply is not there, where health facility is not there. Those who have been the periphery. So for us, it's about upping the game and making Nigeria a better country that is well respected among community of nations. So more of this particular alliance and work will still have to come in. So Mr. B is hoping to use the Labour Party platform or does he have any alternative or option? No, he's maintained that he is still within the Labour Party. He has not one changed his mind. My, my, my so in all of these alliance and possible merger, he's still going to carry the Labour Party toga? Oh, sure. He's going to carry the Labour Party. Should be, that's his political party at the moment. Mm. Mm. Except, of course, anything happening in the future. But at the moment, he's still a Labour Party member. So uh, going forward, uh, what, uh, what in fact, I mean, because we're having a conversation here yesterday and there are those who say, the president should reach out to the political leaders and some of the those who led so, uh, in the campaigns and in the election. Um, is Mr. Obi willing to work with the Tinubu government if he's uh, reached out to? I don't know why they are not taking even the free consultancy that he's already been given. You don't need to be close to somebody before he can be working with you. We have been criticizing very important issues that affect every Nigerian in this country on a constant basis. Let me give you an example. Yes, he came out and challenged the issue of the coastal road. The coastal road, yes, a beautiful program as it may sound, but do we need it at the moment? Obviously, no. You cannot be spending three trillions of nairas on a project where the Nigerian people in the rural areas and all are walloping in abject poverty, which has led to our insecurity. Fundamentally. So why would you spend money when you cannot move from here to Benin comfortably? When even today you cannot move from here to Kaduna freely? Why you cannot move from uh, uh, Funtua to uh, Kaduna freely? There are issues on the basic road that we have, even from the ones that we are existing, maybe Aqua Ibon, passing through Aqua Ibon to go to Calabar and the rest of them are still in their needs of repairs. Even the existing one cannot be where we have countries where you can have even light from Kaduna to Abuja and from Abuja to Lokoja, street light can be, we don't have all of this, money. but here you are embarking on a wild goose project that, is, that will affect the Nigerian people when the money that was supposed to be given to them to use in economic development of their state, of their, uh, of their state and their local government is being kept in abeyance. And listen, recently they're talking about even spending 10 billion naira for car parks in the universities. 10 billion naira for capas. For what? When the university ASU pro program already or ASU issues have not been resolved up to now. Even the people that are working with them with the civil servant have not been paid their salary equivalent that will take care of their basic needs. These are fundamental issues. We have not involved ourselves or implement issues about having a, as, as little as it may cost, medulla refineries in six geographical zones of this particular country to take care of us at least reducing this pain and pang of what exporting our oil, our oil, which can give us about 12, 12 to 13 by product, and we come in with only one product, it's shameful. So why do you embark on such? And these particular issues are being put on the table constantly. So if a good government who is thinking 
inside the box, outside the box, around the box, on top and below the box, is thinking very well. It can use some of these particular constructive criticisms to help us say, okay, we've listened to this, let's look at it in this particular way. So it's a free consultancy, mm. and we're all involved. If a good road is being put on place tonight for us to get to Benin, do we need everybody to be on the air? At the end of it, or probably you get disappointed, probably the flight, the flight will be cancelled for one reason or the other, or you have to pay humongous sum of money for you to travel from one point A to point B. This is, these are, they are no rocket science. These are things that we all need, and we keep on saying them day and night. So if you want to do, give Nigerians the best of governance, look at these small, small things. They make meaning right. to the heart of Nigerians. Alaji, Mr. Tanko is a spokesperson of the Peter Obi uh, Presidential Media Organization. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you time. very much for having me. God bless Nigeria. Thank you so much.